Well, hello and welcome to the video. Um, the next job I've got coming up is in this yonder box behind me and it's some uh, pinch pleat velvet curtains, lined velvet curtains. Unusually the pinch pleats at the top are um, only three inches long, uh, normally they're five or six inches long so it's a bit different so I'll be quite looking forward to making those. I think they're only double. Yes, they're only double pinch pleats so they'll be quite cute I think. Quite a nice simple pared down look. Um, so I'm looking forward to making these. There's a pair of two and a half widths and then there's a single curtain on its own which is just two widths. So I'm going to get this velvet out of the box now. It's been in here safely stored because it's suspended. It's on its roll but it's suspended in the box so that the velvet doesn't get flattened um, in transit or just by being stored. So do that now. Here it is, all snug in its box, and oh, you can see the oh, how it's suspended there. It's actually too heavy for me to lift out, so I'm just going to tip it out. Now, so it's still actually suspended here, and uh, but not for long. There we go. It's got to come off at some point. Always try and keep the label for reference, should it be required at a later date. I must have written this one, but I always stick it on the back of the order just in case. More is required, and it always has what well, usually has the batch number. Uh, probably that. I think it's an Italian fabric, so I think that piezo is probably the piece number and 18.2 meters. No. Have a good look at this. Oh, this is gorgeous! This felt this velvet. Now, just rolled this out, and sadly, you can probably just see over my shoulder there. Look, um, despite it being suspended so beautifully and beautifully packed in the box, um, there is a lot of rippling right down the middle. I'll turn the camera around and show you properly. There we go. So you can see, I'll walk down to the end there, you might be, there we go. You see the full extent of the width of the fabric there and all the way down the middle there is this sort of rippling and I can feel that with my fingers across the fabric. I might be able to see it as well, sort of slight ripply creasing. And the reason for that is there's a break in the roll. So although this is a really hefty tube, it's still broken. If I lift this, you can probably see it. Let me get the camera straight. There we go. So you can uh, you can see that there's a oh god, it's heavy. So it's a shame, but it's not a major problem. It just spoils it a little bit in the making. It means I have to steam the back of it to get these little ripples out. Some of it will come out over time anyway, but obviously it's a nice job it wants to be done. I have a little fault sticker here. So I'm just looking for what that is. It might just be this bottom piece actually, because it's 
quite marked, the pile's quite forced one way and there's quite a definite shadow line there. I think that's all it is. I did notice the bottom of this was quite marked. So I would imagine there's probably, if I was to measure it out, I'd probably find there's an extra metre or so on the length. And then these curtains are going to be made pile up, unusually. I say unusually, I'd probably say about 70 or 80 percent of velvet curtains are made pile down. That means that the as you stroke the velvet, you can there's a very definite pile. Um, it's smooth this way, and if you try to drag it back, you can feel you're going against the pile. And making them pile up means that you get a much richer colour because you can, you can see down into the pile, whereas the other way up, you tend to just see the shiny smoothness of the velvet. So it's a nice way of making them, I think. And this happens to be a very beautiful velvet as well. It's quite weighty, quite thick and quite a long pile as well, if you look at that. So I shall get on and get it get cut in. I'm going to check it first because... Like I say, there's a ticket there. I don't see any others. Oh, there is one there, look, as well. So there's another marker there. Oh, and another one. So, yeah, I need to check this and make sure that I can cut around these fault markers. Um, I'm assuming that the suppliers have um, provided enough. They usually do, but we'll see. Well, that was a pain in the ass because of that fault but I've managed to cut round it and I've hidden the fault uh, at the back of the hem on one of the drops so it's all worked out okay in the end mm -hmm. 